Scripps Research in San Diego. Um, we are a academic biomedical research group funded by the NIH. I'm not funded by Wikipedia or anyone like that um, to do this work. Um, if you want to follow up with me after, my contact is there. Um, be good at scripts.edu, and there's a lot of slides um, more that are more detailed than this available at SlideShare at could be. So um, what I want to get, get through to you in the next 10 minutes or so is that what Wikidata is, um, what we are doing with it to support our work in the life sciences, and to give you some, hopefully in doing that, give you some ideas about how you might use it to help advance your work in building the semantic web of food. So I think the, probably the best way to understand what Wikidata is is that um, it is to data, to structure data, as Wikipedia is to text. It's a free and open repository of knowledge. It's created for the purpose of giving more people more access to more knowledge. That's, that's why it's there. Um, it's run by the Wikimedia Foundation. They pay for it, host it, um, keep it going. It's not, and so in contrast to most of the things that I do and probably most of you do, it's not like a grant-funded project with an event horizon quickly approaching. Um, it's, it's a stable resource as Wikipedia is at least, which is um, more than I can say for most um, projects that we, we deal with. So what is it? It's a, it's a knowledge base. You guys have seen many things like this before. Um, it's a collection of facts and information about the world that you can interact with um, programmatically. Um, the key things that are different about it versus a, pretty much any other knowledge base like it on the internet right now um, is that anyone can edit it, just like Wikipedia. You can go in there and click through and make changes to it. Um, as a person using the interface or as um, your person's program um, to do larger things. And the other important distinction is that anyone can use it to do whatever they want. So this is a, a Creative Commons zero licensed entity, meaning that you could take it, build a business off of it, or integrate it with your data, and it's completely unencumbered. And I was really pleased to hear at the panel on Monday, um, basically the conclusion that they came to, um, that research data should be put out as CC0 because that's the most effective way to share the information and make it the most valuable downstream. And so here's one example of um, a resource like that that you can contribute to. And so Wiki, Wikidata obviously kind of came out of um, Wikipedia and now is very deeply integrated with it and used to drive all kinds of aspects of Wikipedia technically. So if you go to more or less any item any page on Wikipedia, um, you'll find in their tools list on the side there a link to the corresponding Wikipedia, Wikidata item about that same concept. So I'm showing the real in gene there on the right and the Wikidata topic page for that same entity on the left there. One side you have the sort of text view, on the other side you have the data view of the same um, concept. So just terminologically, um, they call the elements of the knowledge base, of the Wikidata knowledge base, items. Each item has, do I have a pointer? Do I have a pointer? No, it's okay. Um, each item has its own unique identifier, starting with a Q, Q146, and its own, attached to its own namespace, so it has its own URI. So these are full-fledged members of the semantic web. Um, in addition to that URI, you have um, no, um, a collection of, no, thank you, of labels and definitions, descriptions in many different language, languages, um, which can use as a, an entry point into applications built on, on this for basically any nation you're serving. So beyond the just simple labels and descriptions, of course, um, these items are linked together by what they call st statements that link together to form a big knowledge graph. Okay, so going in there, these are, you know, you could find that a cat is an animal in Animalia and so forth and other more interesting things. Okay. And just to dive in just briefly, technically, um, how this works. Technically, it's too hard for me here. Um, this is a Wikidata statement. I pulled out here to say we have a topic there, Q84, which is about London, and I'm saying, making the structured claim that its population is about a, mil a million. And I just want to note 
the, that we can qualify that according that that is out according to 2012 and some mes method of estimation, and we collect as many references as we can to support that claim. And so the structure of the knowledge base allows you to make multiple claims about the population of London or about any other thing, qualified by different contexts and backed up by different sources of references that you can use to validate whether you believe that claim or not. So those are the building blocks. You put them together, you get this big, giant um, knowledge graph. It, it's expressed in a triple store containing more than a billion triples now Using it, you can ask Sparkle questions using at query.wiki.org about anything in it. So it's important to know that it's not just about biology or food or medicine. It's about anything you can imagine, really. So you can find connections between genes and diseases and precedents and, and so forth. And so one of the things that you know we're interested in our group is drug repurposing. So one of the kind of example queries we, we built recently was attempting to answer the question, so given a drug um, that you know in this case exists and is used to treat diabetes, what other diseases might it also be used to treat? And you can ask Wikidata that question and you can get, get some answers using this pattern I have here that basically show that if the drug has a physical interaction with the protein that's encoded by a gene that has a genetic association with the disease, it turns out that's actually a pretty useful pattern for finding new um, drug repurposing candidates, and that's a real thing that you can go and test. And so, of course, to you know, make that possible, you have to put data into it, and that's been a lot of what our research group has been doing over the past few years. And so to give you an idea of what's there in the biomedical space right now, um, you can find a gene and gene, gene and protein annotations for uh, every gene in human, mouse, rat, yeast, macaque, and more than, more than 120 different micro, microbes. Um, you have the entire gene ontology graph added and linked to within the Wikidata graph. Um, I should say that each of those items is also linked to its element um, in the other part of the semantic web where it came from. Um, the same thing for the human disease ontology graph, and now for recently more than 120,000 molecules. <clears throat> this has been published in a number of papers in the last year or so. And so, okay, now we have that big knowledge graph. What are we gonna do with it? Um, why are we doing it? So the first thing, and actually the reason we got funded to do this by the NIH originally, was to make uh, Wikipedia better. And so if you look at, coming back to that same gene, which is our favorite demo gene, the Relin gene, and you look at that box of information that you see on the side of the article, all of that content, the entire box, is now coming out of a query into the Wikidata system. That makes it technically easier to manage than what it replaced, which is a kind of a mess of templates. Um, it also means that if you wanted to use this information, you can take that box and put it on your application for whatever purpose, you can do exactly that. All of that data can now be reused and repurposed all over the place. And so the second application um, our lab has created is called Wikigenomes. Um, this is an, an application entirely driven by content that lives in Wikidata. And it's really, we're doing it as a kind of a demonstration of a pattern here where you have an application that's custom built for a community, in this case the genomics community, but all the content in it um, is living in the central knowledge graph that basically is connected to everything else. This allows you to tap into expertise in a sub specific subject area to draw them in with an application that's built for them and for their purposes while still collecting their knowledge in a kind of immediately integrated fashion, as opposed to collecting it into your own little database and then having to integrate it, that with everyone else's database um, down the road. Um, you can go in there and I just mentioned that you can edit all of this information. Those edits will flow directly into Wikidata and be available to this application and to everyone else's application. Um, so coming to trying to connect this just a little bit more directly with, with food, I originally I had this as a requirements for the semantic web of food, but truthfully this is a requirement for a semantic web of anything. And this is probably the most fundamental thing to kind of get straight right off the bat is an unambiguous, successful way of naming and defining things. This is really what we've been talking about for the most part for the past few days. Um, we don't even talk, need to talk about the edges, let's just talk about the things for the moment. Um, and I think that you know, Wikidata provides one potentially very useful piece of engineering 
um, that you may want to think about using to, for this purpose. So, you know, when you say tomato, I say Q23501, which is the Wikidata unique ID for that thing. And the reason that's useful, like right now, is first of all, you have that associated with that, you have all of these human labels as access points into that concept, which is very useful for building applications, right? Those are also, of course, linked to all the different Wikipedia articles and all those different language Wikipedias, also very useful for building text mining applications, for example. And already, you know, without any sort of specific coordination, I mean, this is none, nothing that I've done, if you go to that particular one about tomato, you'll find it connected out to all of these other different databases. And this is, this is about the taxon sort of view of tomato. And so these are all the Encyclopedia of Life ID, iNaturalist, all of these things I don't, I've never even heard of. And what, what we have here is a kind of a brilliantly useful identity, identity mapping service, if nothing else. I mean, I think you could do a lot more as we've been doing with the knowledge, knowledge graph in terms of like that drug repurposing query. But if all you did was use it to hook up the databases together, this is a really useful product. Um, and there's no reason you couldn't use it to do that for all this, all, all this stuff that we've been talking about. And so, um, you know, finishing off my 10 minutes a little bit, you know, just, just to have a look at, you know, one of the more interesting molecules I heard discussed on Monday, this is the perennial. This is apparently tastes like strawberries and comes from strawberries. It has a Wikidata item already. It's connected to all kinds of different um, chemical databases through that pattern I just discussed. Um, and again, would be a great starting point for building this semantic web of food. Um, I'm gonna stop with that, and, and I really need to mention that this is work done by a pretty large number of people, probably a lot more <laughs> than uh, more people that are involved in a lot of projects, specifically within our team. Um, Andra Wagmeister is a consultant and part of the Wiki Pathways team during his PhD um, and built a lot of the early code foundations for loading genes and proteins into it. Sebastian is a postdoc who is um, doing all of the work on drugs and molecules coming in there and we'll be hearing a lot more from him I think in the next few months. Tim Putman is also a postdoc who built the Wiki Genome System and is involved in the mi microbial informatics part of this. Uh, Elvira Matrak and Lynn Schrimmel help us with the disease ontology work. Um, Julia Turner built the um, Wikipedia integration. And let's see, Andrew Sue is the, the leader of our laboratory and responsible for keeping us funded and so forth. And Ginger actually took, this isn't actually the Wikidata logo, she adapted it for us for that purpose. So, and of course I'd be remiss without saying, thanking the thousands of people that produced Wikipedia and Wikidata to make all of this possible. So, thank you very much.